welcome to this week's video of my Rest of Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And this week we are back at the Toylander 1 build. As you can see, there's been more of a change in colour as the priming work has continued. Most of the work has been done here on the front end, um, mostly because there's panel gaps needing filled, um, lots of priming, sanding, filling, sanding, filling, sanding, filling has been going on. I'm a wee bit fed up now with the front end. So I'm going to take you a quick look around what I've been doing on the outside and then I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do some PVA seating on the underside and also do some painting on the inside as well. So let's get the camera out, the tripod and have a look around the bodywork and then get it turned over. So taking a closer look to the front wings, a little bit of wet paint still on this side. You can see a little bit more shiny, but I'm pretty happy with this wing here. There's a few little marks such as here and this little seam here um, but I really think I've got reached the limit of my ability to getting out any of the further lumps and bumps with this wing. Moving over to this, oops, moving over to this wing here. Um, I don't really know why the paint's got all funny and cracked like that. I've maybe put it on a bit thick. Um, as you can see this side's still wet so I'm going to wait for that to dry off before I sand it anymore. But this side here has taken a significant amount of work. The filler went on, I didn't have enough hardener in it, it went off too slowly. In fact, it didn't go off at all and I ended up scraping a lot of it off with a screwdriver, sanding it back again and redoing it. So it's very, very frustrating. I really am doing this to as much highest quality as possible, to the point where I'm even filling the little edge along here and along here as well. Um, front, num front number plate will probably go here and the front panel, which was sitting here, is now in the back. Mainly because if you look along this edge, I want the camera to focus, um, I've had to put filler along the edge of where I've cut because the wood did splinter along the grain, such as there. So I've primed that, sanded it, filled it, and I think it needs another bit of filler. You can see the mess I've made here. The amount of sand and dust and dirt. Look at the garage floor. That's really not like me. Usually my garage is fairly tidy, but I'm really pulling all the stops out to get this looking as well as possible. Also filled in this little panel joint here. And the same on the other side, there will be a little finishing metal strip will go along the top. I've put filler along the sill on this side and the other side as well. And I've also filled in the screw holes on this side. Um, I'm doing a lot of priming then sanding it off mainly because whenever I put primer on it and then sand it I can see where the highs and lows are. It's a bit more expensive way of doing it all but I think it's the most thorough way of getting on top of it. So let's clear all the muck out of the toilet under, get it turned on its side, probably put a blanket down and get a bit of work done on the inside. So here we have the toilet under up on its side and as you can see there's been a good coat of PVA glue put on that. I just put it on neat, I don't water it down. Um, yeah it takes a wee bit longer for it to dry. Here you can see it's sitting on good and thick but it dries clear and it's really important to get it on all those cut edges so that they're all nice and sealed. So we've got all the downwards facing surfaces and the vertical surfaces um, both here and here and in the inner wheel arch as well. And then once that's dry, then I have enough just to flip it over and do the sort of now currently upward facing surfaces and that should be all the ceiling done. Hard to know what I'm going to paint the bottom of this with. Might do it with some sort of stone chip preservative type thing. I haven't really worked that bit out yet. Um, but I want to get it all PVA'd, um, primered, sanded nice and smooth, even the bottom of it. I'm not really going to worry too much about filling in screw holes in the bottom because no one's going to see it. Um, but I want it all to be nice and tidy and well presented. So now I'm going to go round the top. And I'm going to have a go at priming the floor here. I'm going to give it a quick sand, sand the inside of the bulkhead and give this a bit of a paint. I'm not going to go anywhere near where there's dry PVA because I'm not really sure that'll probably end up like a bit of a mess. Um, so we'll give that a go and see how we get on. And just before I put a coat of primer on, I've gone around the inside of the cabin here with a bit of sandpaper and then I've used Mrs. Restosaga's 
a little Dyson Hoover to suck out all the dust and grit. Don't tell her though. Um, you'll notice this video is slightly different to the rest of the series in that I haven't really been showing you step by step. I'm guessing that most of you know how to sand and how to paint and really it would make a bit of boring YouTube watching so I'm just showing you step by step as I go. So I hope you appreciate that. Here we go. And there we go. First coat of primer on around the inside of the cockpit. Haven't done up here yet because I don't want the paint dripping down. Um, I'm sure you know first coat is always nice light dusting. Sand it off and then go again. Lots of light coats is always the trick with these things. I'm trying my best to avoid runs. Um, I'm not obviously going to finish the inside just probably to the same standard as the outside. Um, might be some exposed screw heads, but sure, that's how it is in a real Land Rover anyway. I um, still want it to be tidy though, but not quite to the same level of detail as the outside. Um, just nice to be able to get it on one side, get the paint down in underneath the dashboard, up around underneath the binnacle, make sure everywhere is covered and protected. So we're going to let that dry, come back to it tomorrow. I've just run out of primer and I think it's time to stop for the night, so we'll see you in a wee second when all this is dried. And here we are back again the next day. And as you can see, the PVA glue has well dried in. Even though last night when I left her, there were some run marks and I did try and brush them away, but they were still there. They disappear really, really well, which is great. So this is all nicely sealed. You can still see that the glue is a little bit wet where it's been put on good and thick. And in under here as well, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is now that the tops of the wings have dried. Hasn't actually turned out too bad. There's little bits of cracking that was apparent yesterday. Seems to have gone away quite nicely. So I'm going to flip it onto its other side and PVA there as well. Haven't got round to buying any more primer but I'll nip out and do that hopefully this afternoon. So that's next. So now I have the Land Rover over on its Toylander, sorry, over on its other side, and I have PVA'd on the up-facing surfaces, mainly so it just lies there and dries. I think I've pretty much covered everything in PVA now, and I just remembered when I remembered about this stack of panels on the floor, so that's the seat base, the rear wheel box bases, and the motor closing panel on the bottom of the windscreen. So those all still need PVA'd, but that's okay, they can be done whenever my table is free, because as you can see, there's not a lot of room to put things in here. What I've also done is go around the rest of the bodywork and sand it fairly flat. Um, just checking those aren't stuck in there. I think I'm still gonna be left with a bit of wood grain, but it's not too bad. Um, that's not something for the future anyway. I, I'm thinking about it, Looking at the bottom of the toy lander, I wonder should I just paint it in a hammerite silver um, just to sort of mimic the chassis silver of a Land Rover Series 1. I have um, quite a bit of it sitting spare over there and I also have black. So I'll maybe do silver on the floor and then black in the wheel arches and then leaving cream for the bodywork. Because I will have to get the cream bodywork specially mixed which is going to be expensive and really I'd like to minimise the quantities of the special colour I'm using. So something to think about anyway, no final decisions made yet. So once that PVA is dried, I'm going to do a bit more priming inside and then start thinking about maybe painting the floor. One step at a time, but get, definitely getting there. So as I'm fairly sure is obvious at this point, I have the Toylander upside down. This has all been PVA'd all underneath, so I'm quite happy that it's all been sealed. As I've said, paying special attention to all the seams and cut edges of the marine ply. What I'm going to do now is use some hammerite to paint the bottom of it. And I think I'm just going to use black. Um, black just to do the baseboard really. Um, the inner wings and so on I'll probably do in colour. Just thinking because whenever the wheels turn you're going to see in here. So rather than painting that black I'll probably just do it a base. The same colour as the body. But no point in forking out a lot of money for aerosols in colour matched style for a baseboard that's not going to be seen. So I'm going to paint that black, um, get that done now and let it dry over a wee while. It's hammerite, um, so it's sticky and horrible and I don't really enjoy using it, but I have a tin of it sitting, so I might as well use it up. Let's get that done. 
And there's the first coat of Hammerite on. Really sits on quite thick, um, which I like. Um, it's a bit of a nightmare to work with because it gets on everything and it's really hard to take off and you need a specific brush cleaner to take it off. Um, I actually find rather than buying a specific brush cleaner, it's cheaper to buy a new brush, so I just threw the brush away. I know that's very disposable of me, but I'm trying to keep the cost down here as much as possible. Bit of an overrun here, but I should be able to sand that flat so you'll not really notice it and then put a bit of primer over the top of it. Yes, it is quite shiny. I don't really care about that. And as long as it protects and seals the wood is my main thing. Um, no one's really going to see underneath this. So that's the first coat on. I'll put a second coat on once that's dry. Um, and then that'll be the bottom quite nicely sealed as well. I've done it right up the inside of the sills on both sides. I'm just trying to seal every single join and also seal over the top of the screw heads because they are zinc plated but they have the potential to rust. I would have liked to find stainless steel screws but I didn't come across any in my local shops. Um, so that's one thing anyway. You can just see this sill here is really coming nicely with the filler. Um, yeah, there's a few wee creases and so on here, but it's going to look really top notch whenever that's done in, in silver. And I have some alloy wheel silver spray paint that um, is not really going to be used for anything, so I might as well use that there and also around the back to sort of emulate what a chassis would look like. So let's get the bottom done first, then we'll flip it back up the right way, prime the inside. I'll probably top coat the inside first before I top coat the outside, if you know what I mean. Um, just in case, well, in case I have to put it up on its side to spray it, um, then it's going to make it less likely to damage any of the top coat on the side panel, so they'll be done last, really. Um, probably a bit like spray painting a car, to be honest. Do the inside first, do the outside last. But there you go. So I think we'll leave it there with today's video. We've done a bit more paint and prep. I understand this is probably not the most exciting part of the project, is watching me put different paints on, fill, sand, um, so that's why I'm doing more behind the scenes as it would be with these videos as compared to the, the stepwise fashion if you've seen them in the past. But once we get this past this stage, get the bodywork finished, then I'm really looking forward to getting on to making the running gear, welding up axles, the steering, um, organising the motors and the wiring, getting on in the nitty gritty. As you'll know if you've watched this channel before, Bodywork is by no means my favourite thing. I've enjoyed the woodwork, but the painting, filling and sanding is not really for me. So let's get that done out of the way. We'll put the body into storage, down probably with the Land Rover in the shed, and we'll get on with the welding after that. And I'm really looking forward to that. So if you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. It's going to be down there in the bottom of the screen. Um, hit the like button as well, and I reply to all my comments if you have any questions or queries or anything of that nature you'd like me to clear up. So thanks very much for watching, I'll catch you again next week. See you then.